Our goal in planning a well profile is to determine the most economic path from the surface to the bottom hole location. We first have to determine the target coordinates with respect to the proposed surface location. At the same time, we have to assign the target radius based on our well objectives. This target radius indicates how tightly we have to control the well trajectory. The degree of control is much less critical for a relatively thick, homogeneous interval than it would be for a thin, steeply dipping zone. Dogleg severity limits are based on drill string operating specs, completion considerations, and other factors. Note that it's possible to run into problems even when the departure from vertical is within an acceptable range. Here, even though the inclination is within its assigned limit of 3 degrees per 100 feet, the dogleg severity is too high. This illustrates the importance of measuring both inclination and direction, even on vertical wells. In laying out the well trajectory, we may start by looking at four general patterns. The build and hold, or type 1 pattern. The build, hold and drop, S-curve, or type 2 pattern. The continuous build, or type 3 pattern and the build, hold, and build, or type 4 pattern. The build and hold pattern employs a shallow initial deflection from vertical and a straight angle approach to the target. It's good mainly for reaching single targets at moderate depths and sometimes for drilling deeper wells with large horizontal departures. The build, hold, and drop pattern likewise employs a relatively shallow deflection and holds angle until it reaches most of the desired lateral displacement but then the angle is reduced or brought back to vertical to reach the target. This pattern is primarily for wells in multiple pay zones or where there are lease or target constraints. The continuous build pattern has a relatively deep initial deflection, at which point hole angle is maintained to the target. This pattern is appropriate for salt dome drilling, fault drilling, side tracks, or redrills. The build, hold, and build pattern describes horizontal wells of which there are several types. Selection of this pattern is based primarily on reservoir engineering considerations. We can define well profiles in terms of several key parameters. The inclination angle is the deflection from vertical at a given point, while the kickoff point is the depth at which we first begin building the inclination angle. The azimuth refers to the angle in the horizontal plane with respect to true north, the turnoff point is the depth at which we change azimuth. The turn rate angle represents the incremental change in azimuth over a measured course length, while the build rate angle refers to the incremental increase in inclination. Conversely, the drop rate angle on a build, hold, and drop pattern is the incremental decrease in hole inclination. The lead angle measured in the horizontal plane from the left of the target area accounts for the tendency of a rotary bit to walk to the right its value depends on local drilling conditions. But remember that there's a lot more to planning a well profile than drawing a curve from point A to point B. Many other factors, well spacing, casing and completion requirements, rig capacity, hydraulics, drill string design and specifications, drilling parameters, and so forth come into play. There are a number of software packages that can be used to optimize well trajectories while accounting for these drilling variables. Downhole motors are commonly known as mud motors because they're driven by the circulation of the drilling mud. There are two basic types of mud motors, positive displacement motors and turbine motors. The positive displacement motor, or PDM, is easily the most versatile tool for building or maintaining hole angle. It enables us to initiate deflection simply by incorporating a bent housing into the motor or by using a bent sub or eccentric stabilizer. The bent housing shown here is adjustable, thus providing even greater flexibility and directional control. Conversely, to keep a straight well course in crooked hole formations, we can run the motor without a bent housing or bent sub. The heart of the positive displacement motor is the rotor stator assembly, where circulating fluid imparts torque to the rotor and causes it to turn. A universal connection transfers this rotation through a bearing and drive shaft assembly to a rotating bit sub which turns the bit. The drill string itself does not rotate. This allows us to orient the bit in the desired direction. Positive displacement motors provide excellent steerability for deflecting or straightening the well course. In addition, they allow us to increase the bit RPM without increasing the drill string rotation and to drill with less weight on bit. This can result in higher penetration rates compared to drilling with a rotating Kelly 
and reduced drill pipe and casing wear, an important consideration, especially when drilling high angle holes. Positive displacement motors are available in a wide variety of sizes, rotating speeds, and output characteristics for a broad range of downhole conditions. A turbine motor consists of multiple rotor stator assemblies that drive main thrust bearing sections. These tend to have narrower operating ranges than positive displacement motors, and unlike PDMs, they can't accommodate bent housings. Still, they've seen wide use in the former Soviet Union where they've undergone their most extensive development, as well as in other parts of Europe and in the North Sea. In developed fields where drilling tendencies and formation characteristics are well known, we can use the drill collars, stabilizers, reamers, and other components of the bottom hole assembly to control hole angle, sometimes without having to use deflection tools. Bottom hole assembly design must take into account a number of factors and can become quite involved. But for the most part, the design will be a variation on one of two basic configurations. The pendulum assembly employs a stabilizer up above the bit to center the drill collars and prop them away from the hole. This increases the straightening force and acts to reduce hole angle. The packed hole assembly, shown here in several variations, consists of large diameter drill collars, which impart stiffness, and multiple stabilizers, which guide the bit straight ahead. When properly designed for the formation, it can be quite effective at maintaining a constant hole angle. Keep in mind, though, that stabilizers, especially large diameter ones, add torque to the drill string. They may also reduce the available weight on bit and accelerate hole erosion. And the smaller annular clearance that is characteristic of a packed hole assembly can greatly reduce the chances of a successful fishing job, should one become necessary. MWD and LWD systems have fulfilled a long-time dream among industry professionals by making it possible to monitor and control operations even as drilling is taking place. Examples of what we can now do, continuously and in real time, include measuring drill bit position and trajectory, monitoring penetration rate, actual weight on bit, downhole torque and drag, vibration and other drilling parameters, computing pour pressures and getting an early warning of potential overpressured zones, detecting and correlating geologic markers and formation tops, and evaluating formations even as they're being drilled. These systems are modular and can be run with various sensor combinations according to the well-planned requirements. MWD tools operate by creating pressure pulses in the mud column in response to inputs from the various sensors. Depending on the type of tool, the pulses may be positive, negative, or continuous. These pulses are converted into electronic signals which are processed and displayed at the surface. The basic components of the MWD instrument package shown here include a battery-powered pulser module, which in this case employs a continuous mud wave transmission, a sensor module containing triaxial inclinometers to measure drift, and triaxial magnetometers to measure azimuth, along with temperature and pressure sensors, and an electronics module. This particular tool, together with its accessory modules containing the batteries and centralizer, is run inside standard non-magnetic drill collars. Logging while drilling, or LWD tools, operate on basically the same principles as conventional wireline logging tools. The dual resistivity device shown here contains a gamma ray tool and two sets of transmitters and receivers to provide shallow and deep resistivity readings. This compensated density neutron tool measures density and neutron porosity in a manner similar to that of analogous wireline tools. When drilling with a mud motor, these particular tools are run above the motor assembly. In other words, about 30 or 40 feet above the bit. In some applications, such as drilling in very thin, dipping pay zones, this information gap between the bit and the tool could be critical. For this reason, systems have been developed that allow measurements to actually be taken within a few feet of the bit. Although LWD tools work in generally the same manner as conventional logging tools, Keep in mind that tool responses will most likely be different in highly deviated wells from what they would be in vertical wells, and that these responses require special methods of interpretation. Hey there! Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone.